The finale in the NES Zapper trilogy is Hogan's Alley. Not based off anything Nintendo made previously, however. It's based off one of those shooting ranges to train cops, with bad guys to shoot and pedestrians not to. I like how all the cutouts have unique styles to them, but this one criminal's jacket color is way too close to his skin tone, and so I think he's nude, and that button on his coat is a nipple. Also, thank you for dressing up for this occasion. Sadly, compared to the last two Zapper titles, Hogan's Alley has mostly been forgotten about, unless you're an NES aficionado like myself. Duck Hunt was in every NES system, and Wild Gunman was in Back to the Future. Hogan's Alley got... nothing. Which is too bad, because it's my favorite of the three games. First is the typical shooting range, where you have to make sure you shoot the bad guy, not the pedestrian. It's pretty easy to miss the girl, but the professor and the cop look almost close enough to be criminals. It's no wonder I slip sometimes. The second has a city backdrop where criminals and pedestrians will show up in random locations to be or not to be shot. This backdrop actually contains one of the most important things in NES history. You ready for this? It's the first game to scroll. You notice how every game beforehand was usually a single screen endeavor, but here it was the first example of what the Famicom was capable of. Who'd have thought we'd take something so impressive at the time for granted? <laughs> The last game has nothing to do with criminals or pedestrians. It's just a can shooting game where you try to shoot them in the correct position to get points. This idea was later used in a shooting mini game of Wii Play alongside the ducks from Duck Hunt. Pretty cool callback. Hogan's Alley definitely changes things up more than just shoot two or more enemies in a new mode, which is why I like it a little bit more. But my overall opinion on the Zapper games is that they're great little distractions, and that's about it. It was a tool to impress people that the NES Famicom was more than just a basic controller-based video game console. These three Zapper games were the only ones released in Japan, not counting a later game from Bandai who actually made their own Zapper to be released with the game. Holy smokes, now that would never come out in America. Nintendo would re release one more Zapper game in America in 1986, and a few more Nintendo of America made that featured hired work. But let us consider this the Zapper's final hurrah for now. And honestly, they went out with a good one.